CataractCoach.com. Cataract Quiz, why did we intentionally shift the capsule rexus? Looks like it's shifted nasally. So here's the case. You can see it's a poster subcapsular cataract with other features as well. Using a diamond keratome here to make a temporal phaco incision of about 2.4 millimeters wide. Now starting off with the capsule rexus forceps here, I'm measuring. And what we're doing is we're using that light image, the Purkinje reflex, as the center. So we have this eye nicely aligned up, and I want to center the caps rectus on that Purkinje image. You know, we have the patient also fixating at the light, and that's very helpful. And this helps us to center the caps rectus on the patient's visual axis. And that's the key here. We're not centering the rectus on the patient's corneal center, it's actually centered on the visual axis. So with that rexus, it's a five millimeter rexus and it is beautifully centered. And in this patient, the central visual axis is quite a bit nasally displaced from where you may expect it to be. So we'll do this as a routine case here. And well, you're gonna find out at the end, this caps rexus is very appropriately positioned. So the answer to the quiz is, we've nasally decentered this caps rexus in fact, in order to center it on the patient's visual axis. And that's the key here. And you can imagine if we're putting in a lens that has diffractive rings, like a multifocal or trifocal lens, we want to have that lens beautifully centered up here. Let's go to the end of the case. Here's filling the capsule bag with our viscoelastic. There's that capsule rexus. Again, it may be appear a little bit decentered, but look what happened. As I get the lens in the eye, now we'll have two different Purkinje images. So the first Purkinje image is what you see now. That's the reflection off of the anterior surface of the cornea. And we'll also get an inverted fourth Purkinje image, which will be from the back surface of the eye well. And once this eye well unfolds, you'll see that. When the eye well takes its planar or flat configuration, there we can now see there's the other Purkinje image. We'll go in and remove the viscoelastic from the eye and finish up the case. And at the end, to avoid parallax, we'll line up the Purkinje images, and then you'll see this caps rex is in fact appropriately placed. You can also tell this patient's getting a toric lens. You see the three dots on either side at that haptic optic junction. So we'll center up that lens and make sure we have it where we want it. And you can see there are also some equivalent marks on the cornea for guidance. The black marks are the one set of ink marks, but actually look at the anterior cornea just above the haptic optic junction. There are stromal puncture marks there to mark the appropriate axis. Here we go, sealing up the incision now with a bound salt solution. Do a little angle sweep. Let's finish up the case. And again, I'll show you. There we go. When we line up the Purkinje images, that's it. It looks great. So in fact, we have placed the IOL and the Rexus slightly nasally in this patient in order to line both of them up beautifully on the visual axis. And I think that's an important thing to do. Here you can see the overlap of the Rexus on top of the optic and look at the two Purkinje images beautifully aligned. Patient had a beautiful outcome and we did a very similar approach for the second eye. So keep this in mind next time. Check out cataractcoach.com, our free teaching website. You know, there's a lot of great material there, much more than my YouTube channel. Click on that full list of all the videos by category, and you can see exactly what you want.